take you guys step by step through a perfect deadlift. Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna be talking about what it feels like to be on trend. What? Trend. Super hyped up, it's been about two weeks. What the fuck? It's been about two weeks since I started Tren Ace and we're doing 250 milligrams. I cannot even explain to you some of the thoughts that go through my head when I'm in the gym looking at some of these girls is just, ugh. Can I get a spot? No problem. It's bringing me back to the point where I was like 16 years old, just getting random boners throughout the day. I am McLovin. And any girl that I ever look at, doesn't matter if she's a 4.8 or a 6.2 or an 8.8, .8, everyone's like a 10 out of 10. And just the aggression is just moving through my blood. <laughs> But in all seriousness, guys, I haven't felt too much different. So far, because I added in marijuana right before bed, I have been able to sleep completely through the night. With that said though, I have been waking up and my bed sheets are completely drenched. And that is called the trend sweats. I'm not actually sure the science behind that, but anytime I've ever been on trend, I have woken up in freezing cold sheets because the sheets are completely soaked with sweat, but I sleep with the window open and the fan on, so then it becomes cold, and then I literally wake up in the most uncomfortable position ever. As for being paranoid, being anxious, being overly aggressive, I have never been that much of an anxious person. Even being on trend in the past, I was never an anxious person. Another thing that has happened to me is I did start to slightly get more oily skin. Now obviously you guys know my skincare line, all the supplements I take to counteract that, I have got very good at moderating the oil so I do not get a lot of breakouts. Even you can see now, I have a few like little ones by my nose but other than that, I'm pretty much good. The overall toxicity of my body is nothing extreme. I'm actually going to get blood work done tomorrow and I'm gonna break that down in a completely other video. Enough about the negatives. Let's talk about the positives, bruh. I am on 1900 calories right now and you can finally start to see over the last two weeks my muscle getting a denser, harder look. And that is what trend is really for. Your shoulders start to shape up more. Everything about you becomes slightly tighter, slightly more dense and it really gives you that push through your workouts. Eating so low calories and doing high cardio, I was starting to drag my ass to the gym and start to be like, damn, I just like, I ain't feeling it today. I ain't feeling it today. Every single day, when it's fucking time to go, it's fucking time to go. Trend is like its own pre-workout. It does have high androgenic side effects. So if you are naturally a very aggressive person, it will make you even more aggressive. So you need to target that energy into the gym and not on to other people and you will be more than fine. And the last thing is that my sex drive on prep sucks. When I'm eating so little food, it is very hard for me to like want to do something just because I'm that tired all the time other than my like two hour workout a day. But because of the androgens in Trend Balloon, I'm just ready to go at any time. Now that I'm single, that time is, uh, well, it doesn't come as often as I want, but when the time comes, 
I'm fucking ready. So all in all so far, just over two weeks on trend, I'm feeling good, moderate side effects, everything is starting to shape up and I could not be more happy. And just a disclaimer, I'm not saying that you should take trend and I'm not saying if you do take trend, these things will happen to you and these things won't. I'm simply just stating what's happened to me over the last two weeks as entertainment purposes, just so you guys can have kind of idea of what is going on. So I'm about to eat my pre-workout meal and we are headed off to the gym. I'm gonna take you through a back day and I actually think that we're gonna deadlift today for like the first time in fucking years. And I hope to get up to like 225, maybe 275, lightweight baby! Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're going to 100,000 subscribers and I know that we can make this happen. Let's go. So warming up my ankles, my quads, doing a little back stretching because your boy's fucking deadlifting again, god damn it. So I can't promise no 700 pull today, but we're really just gonna work on the actual form of the deadlift. Because when you come back from an injury, it's like relearning how to walk again. So I'm gonna take you guys step by step through a perfect deadlift and then we're gonna work up. If you can deadlift 135, this just makes the entire setup easier. If you can only deadlift a 25 per side, that's literally okay. It is a-okay. Just put like two blocks under each side so it's not as low to the ground. So you'll have less of a chance of hurting your back. But from every deadlift, and y'all know I have some big ass deadlifts, you always wanna start from the ground up. So right when I position the bar, I will grip my feet right into the ground, keeping equal distribution from the front to the back of the foot. Properly get into the deadlift. I know there's so many different techniques, but I'm gonna pretend like you've never deadlifted before in your entire life. With keeping your shoulders completely straight, I want you to put your hands on your thighs and without moving your shoulders forward, come completely down to the bar. This should be an uncomfortable fucking position if you kept your shoulders in place. When I'm getting ready to deadlift, guys, and I tweak my shoulders in, the bar is already off the ground. That is how tight I am at the bottom of this deadlift. To put this super simple, is you want to try to break this metal bar in half. This is what should happen. It should already come off the floor or have like no slack. I don't want to hear that rattle with the bar when it comes up and down, unless you're like an advanced lifter and you're just trying to Larry wheels, like grip it and rip it. So I'm feeling good. Let's start working. For deadlifts, I've been doing like three to five sets of five to eight reps. And every week, I'm trying to go up by at least five to 10 pounds. And then if anything starts to hurt, then I pull it back down. Because right now, with the injury, it's about reteaching my nervous system how to fire properly. So we're actually just gonna stick with this weight. We're gonna do two more sets, and then we're gonna move on. Right after deadlifts, we're going into a high row. I always feel when I'm hitting my back double bicep, you know, actually fuck this, cue the back double bicep. I find that my upper back is severely lacking compared to my lower back. From years of deadlifting like five, six, seven, almost 800 pounds, my lower back is super developed. So we're gonna focus a lot on high rows today instead of low rows. Let's keep up the intensity. Ooh. I 
as we're doing five sets of everything we're really working on the tempo today we're not trying to train fast as hell we're really trying to activate the most amount of muscle tissue in the back we're getting on that crunch time seven weeks out it's time to start fine-tuning all these little muscles that get neglected in the off season we're picking up the pace because we're seven weeks out we want to train a lot fast like i said heavyweight builds muscle but you won't be able to go as heavy if you're shortening the rest times, but it's still about that like maximal exertion. So just if you're going fast, still lift at 100% capacity, but for that specific scenario. So we're gonna do pullovers, supersetted with pull-ups. To be honest, my back's already pretty fried, so we're probably gonna do assisted pull-ups, but we're keeping this intensity up. <laughs> another high row I'm since I'm doing two back days a week I'll focus a lot of my lower movements on that second day today we're really just fucking annihilating the upper back so we're gonna grip this on the outer handle overhand grip almost just like a double overhand barbell row but because we did some deadlifts today just trying to keep the pressure off my back so I can sit down and really isolate the area so we've only been resting like 30 45 seconds in between sets I'm fucking exhausted, but this is the point where champions are made. First and second place. We're gonna finish with this cool grip for lap pull downs, super set in with biceps. The goal is to do 100 reps for biceps. So we're gonna do four sets of 25 reps just with a light weight, which basically means we're gonna do four sets of these lap pull downs. We're gonna use drop sets and just keep going until our back is absolutely fried. And that's a day, so. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed that kind of raw back day. I hope you can implement those tips for deadlift into your next back day. And I hope you guys are enjoying this prep series. If you could just take two seconds and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, it means the world to me. I know because we talk about such touchy things on this channel that it's hard to like get into the algorithm. So even if you're done watching and have nothing to do, just leave the video on in the background, which will just keep getting the watch time up. And the more that we do that right off the bat, the more that YouTube will actually push that video. So if you're making it this far, you are my real OGs. I cannot thank you guys enough. I'm absolutely starving, so it's time to eat, and I'll see you guys for the next video.